I can't believe Darling is giving me the chance to make two in defense videos. Isn't this just wonderful? After the, uh incident that was Darling in the Franks episode 14, there has been tremendous fan backlash to the decisions made by a certain Code 015, aka Ichigo. Many have criticized her for the choices she made, and rightfully so. However, many have gone even further, claiming that the show's writing has gone to shit, dropping the series because of it, and even sending death threats to the creators. Right off the bat, I have to say, if you're sending death threats to the creators of of a show over the choices made by writers for a fictional character, I highly recommend stepping away from your computer and seeking professional help, because there is a very high chance that you are a sociopath. The bitchy go and thought memes are all funny and entertaining, but there is a very clear line that needs to be drawn. Second, despite the actions made by Ichigo in this episode being very frustrating, the notion that this is where the writing tanked in the episode is misconstrued. Episode 14 is by no means well written, but Ichigo's choices and actions are not where the writing faltered. Let's take this one step at a time. The biggest area that people have criticized Ichigo for is her decision to kiss Hiro at the end of the episode once Zero Two is left. One, because I know how many Zero Two fans there are out there who wanted to see her and Hiro together, and two, because it was <laughs> admittedly very manipulative and poorly timed. Adding on top of that the fact that you're cucking best boy Goro right before his eyes. What people aren't remembering about the series and Ichigo's character, however, is that she has always been like this. She's always been impulsive, always been driven by her feelings. This can be traced all the way back to episode 2, where Ichigo's jealousy of Zero Two integrating into the group and becoming closer to Hiro led her to volunteer piloting with Hiro with no hesitation, and even going so far as to kiss him just to make it work. By the end of all this, and after their failure, Ichigo is clearly emotionally distraught and hurt. Communicating how her emotional attachment to Hiro became entangled in her desire to show that he can pilot a Franks. Time and time again, Ichigo has been shown to be this kind of character, the one who despite being called leader, is the quickest to become emotionally unstable and insecure. These are flaws that make her character interesting, engaging, and play well with the overall themes of the show. Another great example of this is in episode 6, when Strelitzia is being crushed by the giant Klaxosaur, and without a second thought, Ichigo breaks down, convincing herself that Hiro is dead and losing herself in the process, showing how quickly she resorts to an emotional reaction if she's given up hope herself. It's with this in mind that we can look at episode 14 as a whole and the decisions made by Ichigo and realize that everything fits perfectly within her character and personality. After Zero Two has departed and Hiro is a split second away from running after her, Ichigo intervenes, in part because she's apprehensive of what will happen to Hiro if he partners with Zero Two again, and also in part to her love for Hiro, her desire to be with him no matter what it takes. That's why in this moment of heightened emotions and indecisiveness, in a situation where she feels like she'll lose Hiro forever if she lets him go, she resorts to doing what she's been attempting to do this entire series with numerous failures, confessing her love. To us as a viewer, it's frustrating and manipulative, especially considering the context we have regarding Hiro and Zero Two's relationship, but from the eyes of Ichigo, an emotionally unstable and insecure teenager, her rash decision here falls within complete reason. I would also attribute this to her behavior throughout the episode as a whole. It is understandably very irritating having an entire preceding episode dedicated to the backstory and relationship bonding of two characters, only in the following episode to have someone else do everything within their power to keep them separated, but this is where perspective and empathy is crucial we have to look at it from the squad's point of view. It's not like they had episode 13 playing on an overhead projector before the events of now. From their viewpoint, Zero Two is a girl who legitimately just tried to strangle Hero to death and has been on edge and moody for the past few episodes. However, it's not like they aren't semi-aware of what's going on between the two. Almost everybody except Ichigo has their apprehension about keeping Hero and Zero Two separated as well. They sympathize with their plight, but believe that what they're doing is for the best in regards to Hiro's well-being and safety. The only one who didn't have this apprehension or understanding was Ichigo, and this is another thing that played a part in her being targeted as the evil doer of this episode. Again, however, context is key. 
Think back to episode 12 and every bit of information that Ichigo received about Zero Two. Nine Alpha told Ichigo firsthand that Zero Two's goal was to drain Hero of his humanity. And in all fairness to both Nine Alpha and Ichigo, he wasn't lying. Ichigo wasn't so gullible as to believe this immediately though, but over the course of the episode, it became impossible to ignore. Whether it be Zero Two's rage in the bathroom that Ichigo happened to walk in on, or of course during the battle itself where Zero Two went on a rampage and almost took Hiro's life. Even disregarding her feelings and attachment to Hiro, she has every reason to be against the idea of bringing the two of them together again. Which leads me into my last point. The people who claim that Zero Two was an infallible character in episode 14, the holiness that will wash the lands of the filth that is Ichigo, well I've got some bad news for you buddy. Zero Two has been a worse person than Ichigo this entire time. Now before the Zero Two fans wipe me from the face of the earth, let me explain. Zero Two is a very sympathizable character that was made abundantly clear just from the entire flashback that we got in episode 13, showing everything that she's had to go through. As such, her motivations are clear and we understand where where she's coming from when she's committing the atrocities that she is. But that doesn't make what she's doing any less of an atrocity. It doesn't change the fact that because Zero Two didn't know who Hiro was, she was perfectly willing to use him until the moment that she didn't need him anymore. To kill him and drain him of his humanity to reunite with the darling from her past. Of course, this is wonderfully ironic and it really does paint Zero Two as a tragic character, especially when Hiro, the boy that she loves, ends up calling her a monster for what she's done, that she was willing and about to take the life of the one that she loved the most but it does not make her a good person. It's in these flaws that also make her a multifaceted character that I hope we continue to explore. Someone who is willing to take the lives of numerous people all for the sake of returning to the one who loved her in spite of the form she took. In spite of being a monster. And that's why at the end of the day, I don't think there's any one character to pin the blame on for episode 14. Despite the contextualized scenes that they were placed in being poorly structured, the characters themselves all generally acted within reason. So let's all calm down a little bit, reevaluate where people are coming from without throwing around insults and death threats, and just wait it out for this Saturday to see where they end up taking the story next. I have been Phenom Sage, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.